One of the exciting things that's been happening in research and therefore in practice in the last five years, in the last two years it's exploded, is understanding of how the human brain responds to trauma. Trauma being anything perceived as a threat to survival. When the human brain perceives danger, accurately or inaccurately, they have a flight, fight, or freeze response. When that happens, a part of the brain sends out epinephrine, which is adrenaline, norepinephrine, which speeds up pathways in the brain so the brain can respond and send messages faster. It sends out cortisol, which takes energy from the liver, I think it is. I'm not <laughs> a biologist, a neurobiologist. I'm a therapist who works with traumatized children who knows this effect on children. The cortisone then gives more energy so that the body can respond to the threat and can fight back or flee or individuals, animals and humans who cannot fight back like children being abused or neglected or infants whose needs aren't met neglect, they can't fight, they can't run, they can't flee, so they freeze. Dissociation, the human form of mammalian freezing, is they just shut down. Parents will often say he shut down or they'll say earth to child, all children daydream sometimes. You won't mistake the difference if you have a child who disappears, you'll get it. And if teachers occasionally tell you, oh, all children daydream, you just go, watch how often it happens. They're gone, they're frozen. They're not feeling the emotional or physical pain of what's happening because the body also triggers endorphins which block pain. The reason for that in biology is if the animal is being chased and it's bitten, or the human is, they have to be able to keep running keep fighting or keep fleeing through pain. So the endorphins shut the pain down so you can try to survive. They shut down emotional pain as well.